Hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining me one more time. Uh, you have joined the Brian T. Murray YouTube uh, channel. I am your host, Brian. Um, I wanted to spend a little time on this. We're, we're not going to be long, but I wanted to spend a, a little time on this. The the NBA Hall, Hall of Fame uh, uh, in, in, in inductions. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, j just the ones that have impacted me as far as their, their, their careers. Um, first, I'll, I'll, I'll go with the uh, TNT uh, in, in, inside the uh, NBA. I, during the, the beginning of the pandemic, um, if you remember, there was no real content, there, there, there was no content be, be, being uh, produced on YouTube. So YouTube was just at a standstill. So what it did was the algorithm, whatever, it just started generating vintage uh, NBA stuff, NFL games, in it, vintage interviews, whatever. One of the games that I watched was the 1996 Lakers at Chicago Bulls. That was Kobe Bryant's rookie year. Uh, he was essentially a non-factor his first year. But what I remember that jumped out to me the most was Ernie Johnson and Cheryl Miller because they were the um, uh, sideline, the 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 the, the studio uh, anchors. Okay, uh, Cheryl, she was the the uh, analyst, and Ernie was Ernie. Ernie 30, 30 years, twenty five years ago looked amazing. <laughs> I mean, that that is amazing. When you see people today, it's like, oh, you know, whatever. But when you get a chance to see them, I mean, just really remember how they looked 25 years ago. It's like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. Ernie had a healthy head of hair, man. I mean, that's just amazing. I was amazed. Like, yo, Ernie Johnson was a handsome guy, man. I mean, sharp. I mean, just very witty. Uh, blah blah blah. Oh my goodness, man. Amazing. Cheryl, what what was a good? That that particular night, Kenny Smith was a con 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 contributor. He wasn't one of the mainstays there. It's because. He just got finished, I believe. I believe he just got finished with Denver, or he was getting ready to sign with with uh, Denver. But he was essentially out of the league, so he he was like, you know, on, on TV. But you can tell he wanted to go back into the league. I don't think he had any idea the gold mine that he was. Uh, um, attached to at, at that moment inside the NBA has been such a standard in our culture and, and I'm just not I don't just mean in terms of basketball okay it's because if, if you just want analytics you just want highlights ESPN can, can uh, do that I mean it's it, it's no it's a no-brainer how different Disney and Turner is, okay? Disney is straight lace, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Turner, as as, as Bill Simmons says, uh, Turner is like a, a late-night show, but they talk about basketball. And this is what I like. You're, you may be looking at life, oh, well, you can't do this. You can't do that. Oh, that hasn't been done, whatever. When you go through life, why are you waiting for permission? Why are you always waiting for, for permission? Why, why are you always waiting for people to tell you something is it's okay for you to do something? You, you just got to go out and do it. You just have to go out and do it. You don't have as much time as you think you do. I watched 
Lisa Salters, uh, who who won, who, who spent years as, as a journalist in, in Baltimore, W M A M M A R on on back back then Channel Eleven. <coughs> Excuse me. Had, had Evan heard in interview uh, uh, the 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 the. the uh, the uh, stars of, of inside the, the NBA. Granted, K Kenny Smith, uh, what wasn't present is because just it's like he wasn't present for for this week's games. He had uh, uh, a, a personal issue. He he had to um, uh, attend. Beyond on, on that, you know, there, there there's no there, there's no speculation there. Um, Ernie Johnson is just one of those few guys you just feel so. I I mean, growing up, I enjoyed listening to John Madden, okay, and I equally enjoyed listening to um, Pat Summerall, but before he he died, listening to Pat Summerall and, and John Madden, man, I mean. If the Cowboys was playing, if the 49ers was playing, if, if the upstarts, the Green Bay Packers was playing, I mean, if they was doing the game, you know that was the number one game. <laughs> that was the number one game. I kind of hold Ernie Johnson in that regard, not in terms of calling games, it's it, it is, it is because he, he's, he, he's the uh, studio anchor. But it's like he just has so much credibility, man. I mean, his voice alone just does it to you. And, and, and that's what happened when, when you listen to, to someone for 20, 30 years. It's like you hear their voice and you're just used to it. You almost expect it, you know. So seeing them accept the Hall of Fame Media Award and Charles Barkley... Uh, I I remember far back when Jordan was uh, buying, try, trying to, to buy it, 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 into the ownership of uh, the Wizards. What Jordan was doing was he wanted to put his brand of players on Washington. He had conversations with Vince Carter. He had conversations with Chris Webber. Chris Webber made it known. He said after the way uh, the you know Bridges what what, what, what was burnt with with uh, Washington. He, he he said I'm not. I can't. I can't. I can't. Great opportunity, but I I I, I just can't. Jordan had conversations with uh, other players, but one in, in particular was he had a conversation with, with Charles Barkley. He said Charles. If you lose the weight, I want you on my team. And Charles really took that to heart. He was really trying to uh, go back into the NBA after he he had has been doing TV for 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 the past couple couple years. He left Houston, the, the Rockets. To uh, to come come to Turner. Uh, so Charles Barkley, man, I mean, he, I mean, who knew? He, he he's more famous as a media personality as he is the the pit bull he was as a basketball player. I mean, he was a bully on the basketball court. He didn't back down from anybody. He made everybody uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, Barkley was that guy, man. He was that guy. We knew he wasn't as good as Mike, but he was just that guy. It wasn't until Phoenix till we saw how gifted he was. Like, yo. Yo. I mean, he was gifted. That 92-93 that Phoenix team. I'm talking about nightmares, man. Nightmares. All throughout the season, I had I had a classmate, Antoine Cabbage Stock. Antoine Cabbage Stock. I had a teammate who was a huge Phoenix Suns fan, huge Barkley fan. And I was like, yo, what? And at that time, I was a huge Knicks fan. So 
The Knicks was the number one seed in the East. Phoenix was, was, was the number one seed in, 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 in the West. So forth, so on. So I, I, I'm just saying, just, just, just to know to just never underestimate Barkley. He can do or say anything that will shock you. He has brought that those same attributes to TV. It's like some nights it, it looks like he's not even trying, but it's more calculated than, than you realize. During during the the uh, the uh, interview, um, uh, he 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 shed, he shed some light to it. He said, you know, the the success of the show depends on if we got two good games. It, if if we got one good game, one one bad game, okay, fine. He said, if we got two bad games, then the people who make decisions at, at Turner really start doing something. Like, we, we got to do something. Because he, he, he said facts. If this don't... <laughs> if we got two bad games, people are going, going to start turning the TV off. <laughs> and and, and I, I just never thought of it that way. Okay, I'm, I, I'm a very genuine guy. All right, I, I, don't, I don't really... You know, get it in, in, into uh, the whole production of, of things. What Barbie said was right. It is absolutely right, and and, and they and they've been doing it for. Barbie been been on there for 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 about about twenty years now, man. So, so, Kenny, Kenny is is the one who makes sense. <laughs> in terms of the analysts all the time he makes sense he makes sense I like listening to, to a Kenny it, it, it's because so, so, sometimes Barkley and Shaq can just be downright silly and, and Kenny uh, uh, just you know uh, just, just bring the, ro the voice of reason back into uh, uh, the room you know so uh, yeah that, that, that really you know it's it's painful to watch sometimes is because it's like watching chaos live on TV but they, they they've been doing it for 15 20 30 years now and it's like I think they're pretty good at what they do <laughs> I don't I had to feel like ooh I have to watch them is because again it's just all about the the games and even then because of so many NBA games it's like uh, oh my goodness it, it's almost as bad as baseball but when you have a good playoff run you are dialed in you are dialed in if you have a good uh 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 NC uh NCAA tournament Final Four. You're, you're all that dialed in is because you want to watch Ernie, Kenny, and, and, and Barkley. So it's like, yeah, man, that, that that's pretty good. So watching them, that was just powerful. Like, you know, you got to give credit to people when they're just good at what they do. So I remember when Magic used to, 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 to be a real part. It, it, it wasn't a whole lot of chemistry there. I mean, Magic was, was a Magic, but the thing with Magic was he wasn't co co consistent, and, and I know that was a, a issue for him to, to get from LA to Atlanta every week, along with all his other obligations. So I I, I, I get that. So when they later brought on Shaq, it's like that makes sense. Just another polarizing figure. Yes, <laughs> and I like how Shaq acknowledged the fact that he has a mumbling voice. It is difficult to listen to Shaq talk, but I appreciate it. Full di di disclosure: I never liked Shaq. I never liked Shaq. I mean, not 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 as a person, is because I I don't know him, but I mean as a player. What he did in, in Orlando, I, I was I was the Alonzo Morning guy. <laughs> I was the Alonzo Morning guy. Coming out of Georgetown, those Charlotte Hornets, what? Those uniforms, those jerseys. Oh, my goodness. If you had any Charlotte gear at all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was it. That was it. That was it. I remember 1991. I do not remember the name of the store. Maybe it, it, it was Shoe City. I don't know. 
coming home from middle school, I would go in, in into the uh, store. And I remember the first time I saw an Orlando Magic hat. And I was like, who's that? The one, what is that? Magic. I don't I don't understand. Granted, we don't have cable. So 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 like I have no idea. I, I didn't find out for, for another year or two what the Orlando Magic was. <laughs> like a year or two. I didn't know what the Orlando Magic was. I'm watching, I'm, I'm seeing the hat, I'm like, what is this black and deep royal blue? Of, I, of, of course I wasn't calling it deep royal blue then. If all these stars, like what, what is, what is that? What is that? It, 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 explain that to me. What, what is that? So, Seeing Shaq and, and and retirement and you know bringing you know the the championship swagger and his Hall of Fame swagger and all his records and everything to the um, sports desk, I'm like, okay, that they they just added a lot of credibility. <laughs> they just added because <laughs> he was on some pretty good championship teams, okay. With some Class A organizations, you know, I, I didn't like the title chasing he did towards the, the end of his career is because he just flat out began to look silly. Cleveland, Boston, what? He he could have stopped with Phoenix. He could have stopped with Phoenix, but by the time he got to Cleveland and Boston, and, and like he couldn't play over over, you know. Thumb injuries and all this other stuff, like a th your thumb, you you can't run because of your thumb. Like what's what's happening? So you yeah, had all, all all of that going on, but they are a institution inside the NBA is a institution. You have, have to call it for for what it is. You have to, you have to call it for for what it is. Michael Will Will Bond. Now, me living in, in D.C., Michael Wil Wilbon, he's, he's a big deal. He's a big deal. And I I mean, whenever you get a chance to listen to Wilbon speak, it, it's, it's, it's like, it's almost like gospel. <laughs> it's almost like, like gospel. I'm not saying he, he, he was always right, but I don't know. Just like, like Ernie, My, Michael Wil Wilbon just brought so much credibility to whatever he was saying. I remember when, uh, pardon the, the, the interruption first started. I think uh, I was just about to graduate from college or I just graduated. And like this, this show, this game show sports talk, I'm like, what is this? Again, you, it's up to you to invent what it is you want to do. Stop waiting for someone to do it for you. It's because I like an interview that, that he did um, when uh, they, they, they asked him about um, part of the, the uh, in, in, in interruption. Now, number one, bizarre name, but but it's like you know what it is. Um, it, it, it's been on TV for like 20 years now. <laughs> um, I like the interview he did when he said, you know, us doing another sports show really doesn't set you apart from anything because because it's just like sports debating, whatever. But what makes them differ from everybody else is the pace. When you see the clock and you see the already listed topics, it draws people in. It's like you know, whenever I'll see it in passing and it's like, yo, I want to see them talk about Kobe and like it's down at, at the list. I would have to watch all the other topics that I may not be interested. Just just brilliant. Just brilliant. Just brilliant. And, and, and that's what I'm learning. It, it's like you don't have to reinvent the, the wheel. Just make what already exists better. But be yourself. And that, I just find so much encouragement in, in, in that. I just do. 
Rudy Tom Donovich. Now, of course, I, I was not around watching him as a player, but I do remember him as, as a coach of Clutch City. Watching Clutch City, now, as I just said, the 92-93 Phoenix Suns, they made me nervous. That 93-95, to 95, no, 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 even, <laughs> that 92 Houston Rockets team up to the 95 <laughs> Houston Rockets team. They made me nervous. And then when they picked up Barkley, <laughs> Barkley and Drexler <laughs> in 97, oh my, oh, this is not right. This is not, man. Oh my goodness, man. Rudy T, man. You couldn't shake Houston. It didn't matter if they was down by 40 or up by 30. Rudy Tomjanovich had the same face expression. I'd be watching like, what is he doing? What? What? I, I don't understand. It's like they was in every single game. I don't mean just like regular season. Playoffs and championship series and Eastern and Western Conference Finals and all this. The only time I rooted for Houston was when they swept Shaquille O'Neal and those '95 Orlando Magic. Oh my goodness! I never rooted for Houston. And I haven't rooted for Houston since. Well, maybe maybe like last year when 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 Harden and Westbrook was was playing against the Lakers. <laughs> but it's like yo, Rudy T, man. When, when, when you watch the results that they get and you see the mastermind behind all of, all of that, it's like, yo, Rudy T. And you watched him win two championships. Not like he had the championships back in the day but before you reason watching, but you watched him get the two championships and it's like, he did that before, before my very eyes. <laughs> He did that. So, in my mind, Rudy T always had credibility. I didn't like when he went to the Lakers because that was political. Do I believe Rudy T is a great coach? Absolutely. What happened was he went to a bad Lakers team. Post Shaq, LA, trying to figure it out. It wasn't working. And what I didn't like was they they, they they basically parted ways with him. They, they, they fired him. But they said it was his health. In 04, I didn't like that. We knew what it was. It's because that it was about the same time Kobe was trying to get Coach K to leave Duke to coach the Lakers. And Coach K said in interviews, he really thought about it. He really, really thought about it. So, Rudy T, man. He just always scared you, man. He just always scared you. <sighs> Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett, man. <sighs> I don't know where to start with with Kevin Garnett. Growing up, Kevin Garnett was uh, my brother's godson favorite player. In college, I bought Kevin Garnett's jersey. I still have it. <laughs> if you look closely in, in, in some, some of my old vintage videos, I'm wearing it. <laughs> Kevin Garnett, man. Kevin Garnett was like the Ray Lewis of basketball. <laughs> As I sit here with, with a, some Ravens gear on, Kevin Garnett was the Ray Lewis of basketball, man. It's like he was just not okay emotionally, mentally, man. He was just amped up all the time, and he gave a thousand percent every single night, man. The only time you didn't see see him give a thousand percent was by the time he got to Brooklyn. 
and I mean he 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 was like already playing like 20 years in, in the league so 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 no no one can fault him for that but man I remember the old Nike commercial for, from 97 the, the 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 Nike commercial where, where he's walking through a club in his basketball jersey with a, a, a basketball and and at that time one of the hottest songs that was out was from Biggie the sky uh, uh, sky is, is the limit the uh, collaboration he did with 112 I always link that song with that commercial together so whenever even to this day when I hear that song I think about Kevin Garnett it's because Minnesota was not winning they had cool jerseys they had good individual players but they just couldn't put it to, together yet but man, he made people pay attention to Minnesota. Something Christian Leitner couldn't have done. Something Pooh Richardson couldn't have done. Something Dougie Fresh, <laughs> Doug West couldn't have done in Minnesota. But when Kevin Garnett got there, we he made us pay attention. You got to admire that. You got to admire that. Someone who is going to make you pay attention to them? Come on. You understand Kobe and Shaq and, and the Lakers. You understand Allen Iverson in Philly. But Kevin Garnett in Minnesota? You're not even on TV. That was That was major. That was major. That was major, man. I like, I, I remember seeing him in the old school Minnesota uniforms. Uh, by the time Minnesota drafted him number five overall, Minnesota had only been in the league for about six years. <laughs> so that, that, they're very generic, the wolf and the silver basketball and all this up. I'm like, yo, oh, I'm, I'm I'm keeping my eye on Minnesota, man. But yeah, man, that's Kevin Garnett, man. When he got to Boston, one, one, even before we go go there, I was happy for him his his MVP season in Minnesota. I mean, excuse me, he suffered for years being with Starbury. Number one, they were a playoff team with Starbury. Starbury wanted out is because he wanted to be back in New York. The best that they, they could do, do was New Jersey. Kevin Garnett, no matter who his point guard was, everybody from Terrell Brandon to Chauncey Billups to, to, to Hudson, it did not, to Sam Cassell, it just did not matter. He gave a thousand percent. And it was sad to watch him play against better teams. It was sad because you knew he didn't have nowhere near as much support from organization, from Glenn Taylor, and from his teammates. When Spree and Cassell got there, that was crazy. I remember when, when Sports Illustrated wanted to put him on the cover and he said, I will not go on the cover unless Spree and Cassell is there with me? I was like, that 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 just defines who he is. So when they met the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals, I was like, I'm so sad to see this because the Lakers was not worried about them at all. <laughs> and I think um, who, who who was it? I think Cassell got hurt. If Cassell was Fully healthy, it would not have mattered. <laughs> it would not have mattered. It, it would not have mattered. It would not have mattered. No, those, those Lakers were was a buzzsaw. <laughs> they were a buzzsaw. So that would not have mattered not one bit. So I remember when uh, in uh, 08, I'm sorry, 07, speculation of him going to uh, Boston. Damn. They they said uh, Garnett 
to all these pieces in, in Boston and put Garnett and, and Paul Pierce together. And Garnett shut it down because because he had a, a, a no trade clause. I was like, great. Because he had a good a point. If you if if we trade all these pieces from Boston to get me there, it would be just like playing it in Minnesota. And this is what a, what a, a lot of athletes don't realize. Had Carmelo Anthony paid attention <laughs> to what he wanted so badly in New York, his career would, would have turned out totally differently. Carmelo just, just made the top 10 scoring list all, all time in the uh, NBA. And let me tell you, it's impressive. But all of us that that study basketball and watch basketball consistently, we knew what, what, what his career could have been. Had he not forced himself out of Denver, he would have, had he waited and just got signed as a free agent, he would have been to New York anyway. And he would have had all those pieces there. But no, because he just had to get out of Denver, that met uh, us to up. Okay. With Garnett, Garnett, he was like, it, it's no point in me coming to Boston. Because all y'all got some good pieces there, but if you trade all of them here, okay. So Danny Ainge, the greatest thing that happened to Boston was not getting the number one overall pick. They got, I believe, the number three overall pick, and because Odin, Portland got number one, Seattle got no, number two, Boston got number three. When Boston got number three, everybody's heart just broke. Again. Again. <laughs> and and, and, and I'll, I'll explain that later. They were the top two, three picks was no-brainers. Olden out of Ohio State, Kevin Durant out of Texas, and Jeff Green. I think he came out of, out of high school. I, I, I'm not sure. When Boston got number three, Danny Ainge was like, "Okay, let's trade the number the number three overall pick to Seattle to get Ray Allen." I was at work when I heard Boston traded to get Ray Allen. They didn't have to give up any pieces. They just traded the the pick, and Seattle was like, "Sure." We will trade this old-time veteran who was highly pro productive for the number three overall pick. Boston was like, mm-hmm, because it don't matter who you choose at number three, they would never be a better player than Ray Allen. <laughs> when Boston got Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett was like, pull the trigger. We watched all that happen live uh, it, during real time. People was checking their phones, checking the internet. Oh my goodness. This was one of the biggest blockbuster trades in NBA history. Kevin Garnett going to Boston. That was crazy. That was crazy. And I knew Boston was going to win a championship that year. I knew it. I knew it. Boston big three. Big three. What? Shoot. It's because if you if you recall, Boston kept get, getting put out in the playoffs early with uh, just Doc, Doc Rivers as a coach and Paul, Paul Pierce. Boston was just tokenly making the playoffs. They was get, get, getting put out by Indiana and, and all, all those teenagers. And, and Boston, at, at the time, they had, they had their own teenagers. They had Paul Pierce and all these 19-year-olds and... It's like, what are we doing? <laughs> what, what are we doing? <laughs> Danny Ainge, explain to me, what are we doing? Yeah, man. Watching that, that 07 08 Boston Celtics punch everybody in the league in the mouth. I mean, they they was digging up veterans from all over to build that bench and the rest of that roster. James Posey, P.J. Brown. 
I mean, they was just oh, we we ain't oh my goodness, who 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 is who is the guy who went to Memphis? Allen, Allen, the Allen who 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 Kobe Bryant said is the greatest guy, the greatest defender who that has ever been on him. Man, I mean. That boss, that 0708 Boston team, man, that was crazy. And when and when you played them on NBA Live, you enjoyed it. Played with Boston all the time, man, because the team was just so fun to play with. It's like the team was so deep. Whenever somebody got in foul trouble or exhausted for fatigue or whatever it just didn't matter that team was just so deep man i mean i was just destroying teams man that was just good that was just good the trade now remember who, who you're dealing with you're dealing with danny h danny h is the same one who said if i if i was in charge I would have traded Larry Bird and Kevin McHale and Robert, Robert Parrish way before they got too old. Because keep in mind, when Boston stopped being relevant in 91, with, with, with Bird always being stretched out with his back, you had D. Brown, you had Rick Fox, you had Reggie Lewis. As talented as, as that little core was, you had Sherman Douglas, Brian Shaw, that that what they wasn't going anywhere. Not in the East. Not with Chicago and New York and Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. Boston wasn't going anywhere. So from ninety-two Y'all, listen to what I'm saying. From 92 to 2002 with Antoine Walker, Kenny Anderson, and Paul Pierce, Boston was irrelevant for 10 years because you held on to Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Parrish for too long. Now, now Robert Parrish went on and kept playing. He went to Boston. He went to Charlotte. He was like 50. Still, still getting them checks, as Jalen Rose says. <laughs> When now I, I'm bringing that 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 up to uh, say this, Danny Ainge is now in charge in Boston. And he trades away Paul Pierce and Kevin Gar Gar Garnett to Brooklyn for a haul of draft picks. Oh my goodness! When you saw Bill Simmons live on ESPN, you saw his heart break. <laughs> and Jalen Rose was kind of picking with him, trying to make eye contact with him doing live TV. Bill Simmons just he just shut out his he he, he just shut every he just shut down. He just shut down, man. Yo, that was that was bad. That was bad. Along with Doc Rivers leaving Boston to go to uh, the Clippers, Bill's—I I didn't know Bill Simmons was going, going to get fired. If he, he was going to have an outburst, I didn't know what was getting ready to happen. That was crazy. That was crazy to watch live TV NBA draft. That was crazy to watch because you ain't quite know what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as Jalen Rose always say, don't lose your job. <laughs> I don't, no, no, um, uh, don't don't get fired. So watching Kevin Garnett dwindle on Portland is because it, it it just it just got to that time in his career, like all he could do is rebound and block shots. He 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 had, he had been in the league for about twenty years now, y'all. Yeah, Kevin Garnett, man, he 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 was the Ray Lewis of basketball, man. Just he's like, yo, you you do you see how bad your team is? Of 
according to him, he he he, 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 he was an NBA champion every single night. Even on bad teams, he was an NBA champion every single night, man. And as Doc Rivers said, when you bring a Kevin Garnett to your franchise, he, he instantaneously changes the culture. Yeah. Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. The 1997, um, sorry, the 1996 NBA season. Greg Popovich is in the front office. I, I, I want to say he fired Bob Hill. Bob Hill was winning 50, 60 games with that San Antonio team. But as as it works. When David Robinson got hurt, the whole team fell apart. And Pop fired Bob Hill, fired the uh, coach, and Pop became the uh, coach. The only person that was balling on that squad was a 40-year-old Dominique Wilkins. He was the original <laughs> San Antonio 21. 40 years old, still dunking. San Antonio was unwatchable. They could not be on TV. So that year in the draft, the 97 draft, Garnett came out in 95. Kobe Allen obviously came out in 96. Here we are, the 97 draft. Hands down, the number one pick is Tim Duncan. Hands down. I mean, fr franchise building, draft pick, Hands down. Uh, Rick Pitino took that Boston job because they believed they had the number one pick. He had, Boston had two first round picks, and they they just knew, they just knew, Boston. When the draft happened. And San Antonio got that number one pick. The look on Rick Pitino's face. And let me tell you, they never recovered from that. Because here are two, here are the two draft draft picks they made. They, it, 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 it was just nobody even close to what Tim Duncan was. Chauncey Billups. He wasn't the Chauncey Billups <laughs> in, in Detroit. No, 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 no. The league was not ready for Chauncey Billups. Not in 97. No, no. And Ron Mercer. Boston had all these teenagers. Antoine Walker. Everybody not, nobody trying to pass the ball. Everybody trying to shoot. Boston was a mess. A mess. San Antonio was winning instantaneously. And David Robinson got that healthy that year. All San Antonio had to go through was going through the motions of winning. They had to deal with the Lakers. They had to deal with Shaq. They had, had to deal with Utah and, and uh, the mailman who, who was still dominating them. So San Antonio was going through the growing pains of winning as Pop as their coach. I what happened in '99 just made me so furious because the Knicks made it to the NBA Finals, but that San that '99 San Antonio team. They could not be stopped. Whatever San Antonio could not do, Tim Duncan made up for it. Defensively, offensively, the shot clock winding down. Tim, Tim, Tim Duncan would take you off the dribble, back to the basket. It didn't matter what. It, it, it was watching, no, number one, even before getting to New York, watching him. 
embarrass the Portland Trailblazers because I believe they swept Portland. <laughs> I believe they swept Portland. That was painful because <laughs> that 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 ninety nine Portland squad that was a good squad. <laughs> that was a good squad. <laughs> that was a good squad. Yeah. That was a good squad. San Antonio was dealing with them. That that Portland squad had like ten former All Stars on, on their team. If not, they had close enough to it. Watching San Antonio put them in their place, like like they were a college team. That was embarrassing, man. I mean, no, no, no. Look, the majority of those games came down to to the wire. San, San Antonio was like. So, <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> Jared Jackson, man, I, he, he, before 99, I never even heard of Jared Jackson. Senior, senior. That was just crazy, man. That was crazy. And the, and you see San Antonio. New York, thank God, didn't get swept in, in the finals, but it is the same result. The only reason why... <coughs> Excuse me. Those 99 Knicks did not get swept in the finals. It's because Pop put Steve Kerr on Allen Houston. Allen Houston looked looked like Michael Jordan being guarded by Muxy Bogues. I think Allen scored 30 in, in that game. I'm not sure. That was crazy. And Madison Square Garden, man. It was tough to watch the Knicks lose every night except that one night but well, who is this guy Tim Duncan man who is this guy I just had no idea I just had oh I have since learned just like the rest of the world Tim Duncan looks better now as a 40 year old man than he did at the age of 20 That is insane. His last year in the league, he weighed the same amount he did his rookie year. 20 years later. Insane. Insane. I'm looking at, at him. He Other than his gray hair, he looked like he could be 20 years old. Crazy. Beautiful man. My 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 college buddy. She had a crush on Tim Duncan. I didn't understand it. I did not. I did not understand it. <laughs> I did not understand it. But she, oh my goodness, she looked at Tim Duncan like, like, like most of America look, look, look at him, Brad Pitt. <laughs> it was like I don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> What's happening? I don't get it. That was crazy, man. To watch Tim Tim Duncan stay with one team, and 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 look, in 2000, I I, I tell people people this in in, in in 2000 that move to Orlando almost happened. That almost happened. Grant Hill was a very persuasive man. That almost happened. That almost happened. But this is how you work your leverage. Tim Duncan said, "I want a suitable arena to play in." Because they, they were still playing in, in the Alamo Dome, which is not suitable for basketball. You have a football dome, and, and you're playing back basketball there. That means 80 to 90 percent of the dome is shut off. <laughs> but man, San Antonio, man. Uh. San Antonio was winning 50, 60 games before Tim Duncan. But let me tell you, they wasn't playing for, for no championship until Tim Duncan got there. Yeah. David Robinson and Sean Elliott was not enough. Tim Duncan, David Robinson and, and, and Sean Elliott, that was more than enough. And that's what life will teach you. You need to build what you're trying to do. It's nice that that you're using what what you have. That's a blessing. 
But you got to build it. You have got to build it. It's not getting built for you. You got to build it. And let me tell you, I can't tell you how many times they tried to move the Spurs out of San Antonio because they, they wasn't make, making any money. San Antonio is the size of, I, 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 I'm exaggerating here, but San Antonio is the size of Washington, D.C. <laughs> That's not true, but you would get you know, on my point. If, San, if the Spurs was in any other market, they would they would rival the Knicks and, and, and uh, the Lakers and, and uh, the Bulls media wise. But now nah, it's still it's still hanging in there, and even in twenty twenty one they're still hanging in there. But Tim Duncan, man, I mean, he could shoot the ball, and the ball hit the top of the backboard and did roll into the the basket, like. How, how does he do that? I mean, double teamed everything. I mean, he tell them Duncan. He he used to now 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 Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett is doing this doing the golden age of power forwards. <laughs> the golden age. See, you only know the the golden age of, of point guards because because every good team ha, 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 have a have a top flight point guard. Doing those years. The thing was power forwards. The year after centers, power forwards. And the majority of them was in the West. So it didn't matter if you played a bad team, they still had, had, had a top-notch power forward. It was just, you, you just couldn't deal with it. You just could not deal with it. And Tim Duncan, boy, he did not back down. He didn't, he didn't talk trash, but he ain't, he ain't back, back down. I remember when Kevin Garnett shoved Tim Duncan's head or whatever. They, 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 it was in, Kevin Garnett was trying to get him to fight, man. Tim Duncan was like... <laughs> Kevin Garnett, for like 10, 15 years, tried to do everything he could to rattle Tim Duncan. He couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. So years later, Draymond Green he tells a story when when he begins to trash talk with Tim Duncan, and Tim Duncan just stares at him. And, and Draymond was like, "Okay, that was weird." So Draymond says so, something else to him, and Tim, Tim Duncan stops and stares at him like, "Okay, maybe I should stop talking to him because this guy's just different." That was Tim Duncan. He was different. He was different. He was just different. So. Uh, lastly, Kobe Bryant. Kobe was the best of us. That's why it hurts so bad. It still hurts so bad. I lost my mother and it did not hurt me as much as when I lost Kobe Bryant and I never met Kobe. Kobe and I are the same age his rookie year in the league was my freshman year at Howard U University. Natalia is getting ready to be a rising freshman at, at, at USC. My oldest niece will be a rising freshman at, at, at UCLA. We were, Kobe and I, was worlds apart. But I understood him. This man has been on TV three times a week for 20 years and we watched his evolution right before our eyes even after retirement 
listening to him talk as a father, as a business mogul, and a visionary, as a storyteller. Kobe was the best of us. Kobe's rookie year, he was just so annoying to deal with is because he was on the bench. You're not starting in front of Eddie Jones. Oh no. You're 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 not starting in front of uh EJ. When the late great Doc, Dr. Jerry Buss got involved and said, look, you, you need to start playing him. Del Harris did not want to do it. But we watched the hungriest man that we have ever seen accomplish just about all his dreams right before our eyes. As he said in, 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 in an interview, let me tell you about a story about a kid who wanted to play basketball. He played basketball every day practice every day for years and that's what you get that's what you get I, I I thought it was appropriate for Garnett to come out in 95 Kobe to come out in 96 and Duncan to come out in 97 and they all go into the Hall of Fame together when I first heard it announced I didn't want to think about it because it was just the pain, the pain of Kobe. I, I, I'm not even going to spend too much time on Kobe is because I've, I've done like two tribute videos. So listening to other people talk about Kobe makes me want to cry. Still. When I watched earlier, Vanessa put Kobe's Hall of Fame jacket on Natalia. That's when I knew what I was going to do for, for an, an encouragement session. It is still, still so hard. It's still so hard. It's still so hard. I don't. I have no idea why this hurts so much. I have no idea why it hurts so much. So. Congratulations to, to, to all of the inductees and all their speeches and interviews and everything. It, it was just great. It was just great. All right. Take care.